tonight I'm going to try a challenge. I'm going to try to take a picture of five different planets in one night. So in order, those planets are going to be uh, Saturn, and then Neptune, and then Jupiter, and then Uranus, and then Mars. And Mars actually just had its opposition about a week ago, December 9th, I think. Um, unfortunately, it was cloudy then, so I didn't even have a chance to take a picture of Mars exactly at opposition, but it's still pretty close to opposition, so it'll still look very good. But there's unfortunately snow on the ground now. It's not too big of a deal. Um, and it's very cold. It's 19 degrees right now, and it's going to get down to 15 degrees by 10 or 11 o'clock. So I want to show my layers of clothes and how I try to stay warm out there, because sometimes I have to be standing out there for at least half an hour at a time if there's a problem. So these are all the layers I put on. Um, I've got long underwear, and then insulating pajama pants, and I double sock each foot, sweater, and then a fleece quarter zip and then a insulating flannel jacket and then a windbreaker and then for my hands some gloves and some hand warmers and then a hat for my head. So this is the rig tonight. Um, it's a HEQ5 mount as always. The Celestron 6 inch and then the DSLR on the back. And we have the laser pointer aligned and ready to go and I just need to make sure this thing is pointed north and then in about 45 minutes um, I can start polar aligning when I get all the computer stuff out here. We should be able to start polar aligning at 5, it should be dark enough then, and then we're going to have to go through the routine of making sure the, fo the scope is focused and collimated, which can take a while. This scope is kind of troublesome for us getting it um, focused and aligned and collimated. Um, but hopefully I will not have to be out here very long, only to get the gear set up. And hopefully there's no problems I have to come out here and fix. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the stuff out here and connected. So that's Jupiter up in the sky right now. Saturn is probably over there washed out in the light still. But we're gonna go for Saturn over there first. And then Neptune, which is right over there then Jupiter, which is over there, then Uranus, which is right over here, and Mars, which is probably over here about right now. So we'll go one at a time. All the gear is plugged in and connected now. Um, and we're just, we got the pole master ready. We're just waiting for it to get a little bit darker. So here's a quick update on what's going on. So originally I wanted to use the 2 times Barlow magnifier to, which basically makes the planets twice as large, which is an obvious choice that you want to do when you're doing planetary images because you want to want it to look bigger. But unfortunately we tried plate solving with the Barlow and that's just too much of a magnification and there's not enough stars in the image to plate solve with. So we had to scrap the Barlow and now we're just doing without the Barlow because without the Barlow we can still plate solve from planet to planet, which is uh, the ideal way of doing things. Because I want to do as little as much with my hands out here because it's still very freezing. So we just finished Saturn a little later. We're, be we're way behind schedule, we'll just finished Saturn. And I'm about to set it on, Ju on Neptune and then Jupiter. And then there's a little bit of a break um, before Uranus and Mars. Okay, it's about uh, 10.20 right now. Um, so far, I've, I've remotely operated everything um, from my laptop inside, and it's all gone pretty smoothly. And right now, it's already pointed at Mars from inside. Yeah, so Mars is like almost overhead entirely right now, um, above Orion and next to the Pleiades. Um, so now I'm going to put the Barlow in. And I'm also going to experiment with some color filters on Mars. Two years ago when I took a picture of Mars, I used the number 8 yellow filter. And it was definitely an improvement over no filter. So I'm going to do that again. And I also have additional color filters that I'm going to try out. So after I put the Barlow in, I'll have to refocus. And we figured out that 
putting the Barlow in, you have to just focus uh, about two turns counterclockwise, which is kind of counterintuitive to what I would have thought it was, but anyways, that's how it works, so I'll have to do that real quick. Okay, so I've just put the Barlow in and then refocused it. Um, it's looking pretty good. It was hard to focus because it didn't even really come into focus that good. And I'm thinking that it might be because... Because there's ice crystals formed on the glass here. Um, I'm not too sure how big of an issue it is. It looks worse on camera than it does in real life. Um, you'll have, just have to trust me on that. Um, but yeah, I have no idea if this is a problem or not. Um, it's not... It could be affecting the clarity of the, the image, preventing it from focusing in too good. I put filter number... Eight, the yellow filter in, which is what I used two years ago. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start this planetary session here. I'm just gonna do 10 minutes of recording frames, so I'll just let that go there. Yeah, so I'll come back out here in 10 minutes and then I'm gonna put the number 21 red filter in and see how that looks. I'm inside now and I'm watching, um, watching the progress on my laptop. I'm remoted in, there's a minute left, so I'm going to get ready to go back outside and then change the filter and then do another 10 minutes. This way I'll be able to kind of see the differences between the two filters and see if one's better than the other. I just went outside and put the red filter in now. Um, so here's the screen. It's completely red, which I think is fine because it'll just get fixed in the um, color balancing post. So. I think that's fine, but it should help bring out some detail, I think, in the Mario. Alright, the second uh, Mars capture went well, and I'm going out here to um, turn everything off, and then I'll bring the battery inside, and then I'll bring everything in uh, tomorrow afternoon, because it's freezing out here, it's 13 degrees. And I need to get to bed because I have uh, final exams tomorrow at 7.30, so. Alright, so I've got all the pictures processed, and I'm going to go through them each one by one in the order that I took them in. So first up is Saturn, and it came out pretty good. The rings are clear, and you can see a little bit of striping on Saturn. It's a pretty decent picture, and Saturn's opposition was back in mid-August, so... So about four months later, it's still a um, pretty decent shot. Next was Neptune. Neptune and Uranus, I did a little bit differently than how I normally do planets. Instead of doing lucky imaging, which is taking lots of really short exposures and stacking the best ones, I took 10 30 second exposures of Neptune. And then I, out of all, I looked at all 10 of them and picked the best one, which was the one with the least amount of star trailing. And that was this one. Um, so it's pretty round shaped and it's uh, teal in the middle. You can see the kind of dark blues on one side of it. And yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Neptune's opposition was back in mid-September too. So I also stretched this picture out so that you can see it's got a moon next to it and that's its moon Triton. So next was Jupiter. Jupiter's got some pretty good detail. Uh, you can see there's some stripes pretty decently and without any stretching, it's got two very visible moons, which are Io and Ganymede. And Jupiter's opposition was back in mid-September and it still looks pretty decent. After Jupiter was Uranus and it's the first time I've ever taken a picture of this planet. It's definitely brighter than Jupiter because the center of it is almost completely blown out in that 30 second exposure that I picked. But you can still see the teal and blue on the fringes of it. And then similarly to Neptune, I stretched it and you can see a lot of its moons actually. Got quite a few. I believe it's got Titania, Ariel, Umbriel, and Oberon, as well as maybe one, one or two more. That was pretty cool, I thought. And Uranus's opposition was in early November, which is not that long ago. Next was Mars. So you can see it's pretty orangey and you can see some Mario detail kind of made out and some kind of whitish at the top and bottom, which might be the poles, I'm not entirely sure. But it's definitely a darker stripe, not very much detail, kind of disappointed in that. 
Um, and then I did take it in two different filters. So this was the number eight yellow filter. And then this is the number 21 red filter, which is more red, but I think that the contrast is definitely improved. Um, I could have done the color balance a little bit better to make them, to make it less red probably, but it definitely has better contrast in the Mario. I also wanna take a look at the pictures of Mars I took two years ago because they are better pictures. And that's due to a few reasons. Probably the most prominent reason is that in 2020, the opposition was just better. Uh, Mars was 22.6 arc minutes across in the sky, whereas this year it was only 17.2. So it was quite a lot bigger in the sky two years ago. I have a feeling the scene conditions weren't quite optimum this year, as well as the fact that I had some ice formed on the lens which probably diminished the clarity of the image as well. So this was the picture, this is the first picture actually I took in 2020. Um, you can see it's still a lot better than um, this year's picture. There's um, a lot more contrast between the Mario and the red dust, just a lot more details in general. You can see there's a little bit of polar ice um, at one side here. And then a, about two weeks later, I took another picture um, and there's even more detail, even more contrast in this one. Um, an even better shot of the polar ice, and this is probably this is my best picture of Mars that I've ever taken. So that's the conclusion of this challenge. I put together a little graphic of all of the planets that I took a picture of this night, um, so I'm going to leave you with that.